Good evening and welcome to Pound Posse Presents. Thank you for joining me this evening. Um, gonna give you a fair warning before we get started tonight. I'm gonna cover a couple of stories. Uh, if you're that boo-hoo that makes me sad type, you might wanna tune in a little later in the show because I don't sugarcoat anything and um, animal abuse is getting slightly out of control uh, and that's what we're gonna talk about for the beginning part of this show. So I'm gonna start with a tragedy that was brought to my attention in East Haven. Um, unbelievable how people disregard the lives of animals and it, it just, it sickens me, it infuriates me and the East Haven Animal Shelter is sending out a plea to the public uh, for any information that might lead to the person or persons who are responsible for what happened to poor Sunshine. And while I have Zach roll some pictures for you, I'm going to actually just read the article that I wrote in my column because that's probably going to be the easiest way. Now this dog that you're looking at, this sweet face, that's Sunshine. And um, she looks real sweet there, but once the pictures start rolling, you're going to see why this is such a tragedy. So as of Wednesday, when I was tagged in um, the East Haven's plea, this is my article. Today, the East Haven Animal Shelter released disturbing photos of an emaciated dog found on the East Haven-New Haven border, along with an appeal to the public for any information leading to the person or persons responsible for the dog's neglect. Turned into the shelter by the Good Samaritan who found her, the dog was named Sunshine. She was taken immediately to New Haven Central Hospital where upon examination, it was determined that Sunshine had been suffering from an obstruction in her intestines for at least two months. Apparently used for breeding, Sunshine had been denied medical attention for her life-threatening condition, was left to the slow, painful process of starvation, and eventually dumped to die alone on the streets. In spite of the veterinarian's best efforts, Sunshine was too far gone and she did not survive. Her final hours were spent surrounded by those who gave her love and comfort. As weak as she was, Sunshine showed her appreciation with a wagging tail. If you know who Sunshine once belonged to or can offer anything that might help in the quest to obtain justice for her abuse and subsequent death, you are asked to contact Officer Little at 203 468-3249. And I'm gonna give you that number one more time. 203-468-3249. Now, as you look at these pictures, they are quite disturbing. Um, this dog suffered, I wanna say, for longer than two months. Uh, whether she ingested whatever was obstructing her intestines, uh, and that was, the cause of her starvation or subsequent to her starvation because she was hungry and tried to eat something um, and it got stuck, they'll never know. Um, it's not clear what was in her stomach as, or her intestines at this point. Um, you know, when a dog comes in in this condition, and you might all remember Patrick the pit bull in Jersey who was starved and then left for dead, thrown down 19 stories down a trash chute and found in a garbage bag uh, by someone in the garbage room. He is a miracle. Dogs don't necessarily, nothing can necessarily um, come back from severe starvation. It is a slow and painful process. Your body starts feeding on itself. Your organs start to shut down. You miss your lunch, you get hungry live with that feeling for days and days and days. It is a miserable way to die. And this poor dog, uh, you can see clearly in this picture, was used for breeding at some point um, and just thrown away like, cr like trash. I mean, this, this takes throwaway mama to a whole new level. And, you know, somebody had to know this dog was suffering like this. 
somebody somewhere knows this person who had this dog and if there was any no Zach <laughs> if there was any indication that you know th this dog had eaten something and that's why she was in this condition they should have done something you know um, reached out for help done something turned her into a shelter anything but to let her suffer and to let her ultimately die from suffering uh, from starvation uh, I think that it's it's a horrendous thing and I think that yes yeah, somebody does know and probably can give up a name now you're, you're not a snitch it's it's not just legally a crime I mean I'm sorry it's a moral crime and I'm not somebody to get on my high horse about religion and morals and all that but these are defenseless animals that people just play God with how, look at how do you let that happen to an animal how do you do it and then instead of ending her suffering just let her be out on the street she wasn't out on the street like that by herself for you know somebody would have seen her somebody would have noticed her I mean clearly somebody did because they picked her up and they took her to the shelter the shelter rushed her to the vet and unfortunately it was too late no they couldn't get the obstruction out of her intestines you have to be a lot more healthy than she was to be able to operate so they would have had to done a lot of work before they could ever find out what was in her stomach again to hearken it back to Patrick uh, he had some foreign object in his stomach and they had to wait until he was well enough to be able to get that out and I forget what it was hair or something but you know it, it wasn't like they were going to be able to just take her cut her open free for her from her obstruction and um, you know she was going to survive an obstruction is a very serious thing which is why you've really got to mind what your animals do chew and eat uh, you know even the stuffing from toys can cause an obstruction but I have the sad feeling that this poor dog didn't have toys so that wasn't the reason why she was uh, obstructed when you block your intestines you can't pass anything through your stomach you're gonna vomit up anything you eat um, you know it's 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 ugly it's painful it's ugly and this poor dog who could still wag her tail at the people who tried to care for her did not deserve to suffer like this and she did not deserve to die like this so clearly it, it's a situation that needs to be addressed uh, like I said I wrote the article it's been out there it's been widely viewed and I appreciate everyone who has shared it and and tried to do um, the best they could to spread the word but if you know anything at all uh, that would lead to uh, finding the people who did this you really are encouraged you know to step up for the sake of the life of an animal and the number to call is 203-468-3249 she was found on the East Haven New Haven border she could have come from anywhere it didn't necessarily have to be those towns if she was dumped but uh, you know that'd be the place to start uh, if you know somebody who's been breeding pit bulls well then you might want to check in and make sure that the mama dog is still around because I would be I would bet my life that you know somebody you know who's been breeding pit bulls is missing a mama right now and for all we know there are puppies who uh, you know didn't grow up with their mama and that's pretty sad and on the same vein there's another story of abuse that came to my attention just this morning and it's it's horrific in another and uh, just another whole light um, Zach let's pull up the first picture of the poor fawn there we go let's hold that for a minute this fawn was found in Greenwich now you know Greenwich you don't think of being necessarily uh, anything but the privileged but clearly uh, there are deprived as well as privileged this fawn was chased fell in water dragged out of the water beaten hogtied with zip ties string and duct tape and left on the side of the road to die now you tell me first of all what is more harmless than a fawn 
I mean, you know, if you've got a thing that you, you, you can't stand a certain type of dog or you can't stand a pit bull and, and that's your thing, I feel sorry for you right out of the right out of the shoot. But a fawn has got to be one of the most tender, timid, defenseless creatures. Uh, this this little baby should not be away from its mother. However, it's already off to a start that is unbelievable. So yeah, as if the zip ties weren't enough, the string wasn't enough, the duct tape wasn't enough, all three. I, I can't imagine that you would be sick enough to go out into the world armed with all of these things looking for trouble. I mean, you didn't just, it's not like you had some string in your pocket and you found a wild animal and decided to be mean. You had to have had all three of these things ready and waiting to go, prepared to do harm to some living creature. And I'm pretty sure that one person wasn't going to be able to pull this off all by themselves. Um, Zach, show the close-ups of the poor thing's legs. Uh, you went out there with someone. You had help. There are more than one person or who know what, what happened here. I mean, really? It, it, you, you, this is another case where these people, look how tight those zip ties are, really? This is another case where somebody knows something and someone needs to step forward and say something because it's just completely unacceptable to think that there's somebody rolling around out there that would do this to an animal. Um, fortune, and this is all the stuff that they took off. Like really seriously, I, I just, as if one wouldn't have been enough, all three had to be used. Amazingly disturbing. Um, fortunately, there is a wildlife rescue, and there, there's this poor thing in a crate. Like, a deer belongs in a crate, right? I, you got to hope that it doesn't freak out, that it accepts the fact that the people are trying to help it. Taylor's Wildlife Rescue Group in Stanford uh, is, is the group that is taking care of this poor little creature. Hopefully, um, the, the beating didn't cause a lot of internal injuries. Hopefully that this little baby will be able to um, be healed and rehabilitated and let back out into the environment that it was born to. But I can guarantee you that no matter where, where this animal may be released in the future, it will never know its mother again. And it's clearly at that age, not old enough to be on its own. So that in itself is heartbreaking but kudos to Taylor's Wildlife Rescue Group because uh, apparently uh, it's a group that, I, I mean, I've been looking to connect with a wildlife rescue, but not because an animal like this was mistreated. Um, but they have already, we, I've been in contact with them and hopefully can get them to come on the show and talk about a lot of what they do and maybe we'll find out some more about this poor baby and how it's doing. But, you know, they clearly have their hands full because there's a lot of wildlife that people stumble upon, people disturb, people um, come across and you know thank God for the person who decided to stop and help this poor deer. Um, you know how do you beat up a fawn? I mean I just any and all of it is disturbing enough but but put it all together and it, it just it's it's to me it's the most mind-boggling and disturbing thing that people want to do stuff like this to animals. So I, I did try to find out who to contact if there's any information. Uh, but for now, until I have a better answer for you, I'm going to say you can get in touch with Taylor's Wildlife Rescue Group if you have any information. Like I said, I, this is not, in my eyes, this is not the doing of one person. And unfortunately, people who are sick like that like to brag. So, you know. Kudos to you for both Sunshine and the Fawn, if you can sleep with yourselves at night. But someone somewhere knows something about both incidences. Um, and if you know anything about this poor Fawn, you can call Taylor's at 203-524-2189. And um, hopefully they'll find out something because uh, it's just, to me, it's far, far, far too disturbing 
to, to think that, you know, this stuff goes on. And unfortunately, it does go on. And, you know, so many things are swept under the carpet. There are so many things done in, in darkness and secrecy that we never know uh, what happens and we'll never know the truth. And poor animals that suffer and die in, in complete anonymity, it, it, it's, it's, you want to get me furious and yes, I'm ranting, hurt an animal, go ahead. Um, but it, it's just unbelievable, unbelievable. Zach, I will take the camera back for a hot second and um, I'm just going to give a little bit of an update on some of my birthday dogs. Uh, Catalina, who never made it to my birthday list because she was adopted like before I, I aired my list last week. She went home and she has been renamed Lena. And unfortunately, she's got some health issues and we knew she was blind. She was thought to be a senior. Apparently, she's not as old as anybody thought she was, but that's, you know, with her blindness and her condition, um, you know, it's, you can, you can be wrong until a vet actually takes a look at a dog and, and assesses it, any animal, really. But poor Lena apparently has heartworm, and it didn't, I didn't see anywhere posted what stage she was in, but heartworm is pretty serious, and I think I'm going to cover that, uh, at some point in a future show what exactly heartworm entails but that's a, a great reason for heartworm preventative it's a great reason to make sure that when you have your dogs out you know and there's mosquitoes and that's how it happens and they are literally worms that create holes in the heart and you know the heart can't take that and the treatment is a pretty poisonous dose of a medication that kills the worms and the dog has to be kept perfectly calm so poor Lena has her work cut out for her or not work cut out for her in that respect but from what I saw in the post her eyes also need to be removed so she's got obstacles uh, but she is definitely in good hands and I believe they said she's I mean they were they were saying she was a senior but I believe from what I read, the vet thinks she's only like three years old, but she seems pretty high mileage on the outside because she's so ill. So we certainly wish the best for Lena. And, um, you know, I will certainly keep following her story. Uh, Zach, let's take a look at that picture of Carl. And I have happily to say that Mr. Handsome Smoochy Face Carl went home yesterday. Uh, he was transported to his adoptive family and he's got a new daddy and there were some great pictures on Facebook of his freedom ride and uh, with his new daddy. But that little smoochy face is off to happy days, which, you know, I got, I, I, you know, at work last night, take my break, get on my phone, looking at Facebook. There's all these posts, I'm getting tagged, I'm blubbering in my dinner, you know, in public, it was great. <laughs> but I cry at adoptions, I can't help myself. But happy tales to Carl, and I hope he has a wonderful life, and never again to be a homeless pup. Gosh, I still want to listen, I know, right? <laughs> Nancy's in there all happy. I still want to smooch that face, because he just has like that, like, poochy, smoochy mouth, I don't know. All right, so call me crazy. And you have. <laughs> All right, so let's look at Taj, if we can, uh, real quick, Zach. And here's a reminder, Taj is still urgent. Uh, she spent more than half of her life in the pound. And uh, she's a little over a year and a half old. She's very stressed, and she's at the top of the list in New Haven, which means that when they kill the next dog, it's going to be her. So they've been struggling with urgence. They've been struggling with being full. Look at that beautiful face. She's a sweetheart. Don't let it happen. Um, let's take a look at Percy, if we can. And Percy is a sweetie, gets along with everyone. Uh, another urgent, been there since January. Uh, so we've got to get Percy safe 
And Percy and Taj are in New Haven, as I said. The number there is 203-946-8110. That's 203-946-8110. And then we're going to move on to a couple of dogs from Bridgeport. We've got Desiree. And Desiree has been in the shelter, and look at that smiling face, since October. And we have another picture of Desiree as well. We got a side shot of her. Uh, so if Zach can just flip to that one, that'd be cool. And um, she's been in there since October. She's a year and a half old. No cats. She's very energetic. She's very athletic. I hear she likes to jump around in her kennel. Uh, apparently the red collar is meant to be a lucky collar uh, so that that will help her find her way home it'll attract an adopter or you know be her lucky charm or something but if you look at her she's a beauty and she has been there for too long so she needs out we've also got Pipa Pipa has been in Bridgeport since November she's another throwaway mama she's very sweet she's very playful and for all intents and purposes, um, I want to say that I think that poor Peep has probably been overlooked because she's a black dog. And Bridgeport, if you're interested, give them a call, 203-576-7727. That's 203-576-7727. And I just realized that I think I forgot to tell Zach to put up a picture, and that's my bad again. Uh, there is a dog, Junior, that I mentioned last week. He's gorgeous. And Junior, I'll take the camera back. Um, Junior was given up by a homeless guy. He was taken in by a couple. The husband supposedly loves him. The woman doesn't like dogs. Um, I'd divorce her if I were him, but whatever, and live with the dog. That's just me. Um, Apparently, he is left outside all day, and now we know it's getting far too hot for that, and locked up in an in-law apartment all night. So he's virtually in solitude, all by himself, um, no way for a dog to live. So if you're interested in helping Junior out, and he is posted on my Pound Posse Presents page, even though um, clearly human error and me uh, are one and the same tonight, you can call 203-641-4604 if you want to give Junior a loving spot in your world. I mentioned last week there's a 20-year-old cat in Bridgeport as well who would probably love to spend her final years um, in comfort rather than a shelter. Uh, real quick, tomorrow is uh, a really cool thing. Um, it's a three workshop um, deal. It's Pet Safety Day if you're in the New Milford area at noon. You can check out the Pound Posse Presents uh, Facebook page to find out more about that. They're going to cover um, pet first aid uh, kits and how to use them, pet proofing your home, and also traveling with your pet. So those are three pretty cool areas to be schooled on. Um, so check that out, Pet Safety Day. Look at um, the Pound Posse Presents page for more information. Now, Zach, I'm going to ask you to pull up the last picture. Um, I'd like to introduce to the world my little Bella, who is my foster. Um, <laughs> there goes the ear thing again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and I don't trust Zach. See, there we go. <laughs> He loves to do that to me, and I set myself up every time with these pictures. But there's little Bella. Um, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, I said that uh, Buster and Bentley found their forever home, and they appear to be doing quite well, and good for them. Thankfully that uh, they found the right people and in the right timing and can live happily ever after like every dog should, and they stay together because that was a concern. And on my way home from dropping off Buster and Bentley, I get tagged in another post about a dog in Waterbury who needed a place to go. Um, poor Bella's bounced around five homes in her two years, uh, partly because um, you know her potty training was never followed through on, so people got sick and tired of cleaning up after her uh, rather than training her. 
So Bella's with me now, and she has had nothing but, shall we say, productive walks um, all week long. And she's being a pretty good girl. She's gone overnight without using her little pee pad. And um, she's doing really well. The problem is she's settling in, and that's going to break my heart when it's time for her to go to her forever home. But I'm going to fix her before I send her on. And by fix her, I mean fix her problems. She's already spayed. Um, but she's a little love, and she's a lot of fun. And we've been having a great time. And, uh, you know, she's, she's, they say dachshund and chihuahua, but I don't see the dachshund in her. I see more like Italian greyhound because she's so skinny. And um, you see dachshund, Nancy? Do you really? I don't know. Maybe at that angle, but it's, it's just, I, I don't, when you look at her body, you don't see it. But she's my little beauty with her big bat ears. And um, it's, it's funny because, you know, we're out and the breeze is blowing. I expect her to be like Sister Bertrill, the flying nun, and just take off. But uh, sooner or later, Bella will be available. And she will find her right and proper forever place in the world. And that will be a process. And I will certainly um, exercise due diligence in, in making sure that she doesn't ever bounce again. Um, anyway. We're pretty much, how long we got there, Zach? Okay, all right, so I filled my time. <laughs> um, all right, if you know anything at all about the deer, the little poor little fawn, if you know anything at all about sunshine, please step forward. Um, animal abuse is no joke. You know, a lot of people uh, say that it's, it's the stepping stone to um, abusing people, or it goes hand in hand. But I'm more concerned about the animals, and you know I am. So until next week, I'm going to say peace, love, and dogs. Thank you for joining me. And if you know anything, please step up and say something for those animals. We have to be their voice, because they don't have one of their own. Good night, everybody. Have a great rest of the weekend.